Good afternoon. And for once, I can actually say that for those of you that um, follow us on a regular basis, you'll know I start every podcast with good afternoon, even if it's 1030 in the evening. So <laughs> there's, there's no there's no truth in the rumors that I'm doing this just so I can say good afternoon and get uh, get away with it. Um, Hopefully, um, there's a few people will be able to watch, join us and watch in. I know it's obviously during the day, so it's uh, a, a lot harder for people. But um, it was a late night last night, uh, or late match, so I just thought we would leave last night and uh, look at it today. Uh, so we'll be having a look at um, the match last night, and we'll be looking, obviously, at Indeedy as well, because that's uh, another kick in the teeth for us by the look of it. But coming on to the match last night, 11 changes, and I think that's a record for Leicester. Uh, I understand why he did it. Um, it needs to be done. We need to give these players a run out. What did he learn? Other than maybe a lot of players that were in that squad last night aren't up to it. Um, I don't know that there's many that I would actually bring in for uh, Sunday's game. But, uh, he, you know, he went for it. And I think looking at last night, we obviously 2-0 lost. It wasn't, you know, uh, a mauling by any chance, of the, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it wasn't the best game. They made seven changes. Like I say, we made 11. But had we beaten um, Arsenal, obviously we would have come up against Liverpool. Is it is it good that we're out? You know, is, is it one less competition where we can get injuries, where we can get bans or or whatever? Is it going to give us a chance to concentrate on the, the matches that we need to maybe be concentrating on? I know the Leicester fan. I want to win every game. Of course, I want to win every game. But you know, I've got to be pragmatic. Rogers has come out today and said you know, might not have the money that we, you know, he thought to make transfers. So maybe we'll have to stay with what we've got. And if that's the case, is it good to be out of the League Cup? I'm going to introduce my my uh, my colleague on um, our post-match uh, videos. Um, and that is Brad. So I'm going to welcome Brad in. And I'll just start with that question. Uh, are you happy that we're out? No. No, I'm never mm. happy to be out of any no. competition. But I will back that up and say, whilst there was a few things that we will talk about uh, performance-wise that I wasn't happy with, I was probably happy with the overall assessment of that game because it, it you could tell by the lineup it was used to tick a few boxes uh, to see where players are at with development and coming back, etc. But no, I'm not happy with the feet. The performance mm. wasn't um, uh, wasn't bad though. Uh, I think, given everything, the performance was pretty decent from what was out there on the pitch. I mean, I'm just looking at the stats from last night. Possession, it was well, forty nine fifty one, a bit of a Brexit uh, uh, Brexit <laughs> percentage there. Uh, we actually had fifteen shots to their ten, but of those fifteen we only actually managed to get two on target. That that tells us a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, quick point on that one. Uh, I don't think Ineacho made a pass that was further than 10 yards to his own teammate and didn't do a lot right in that aspect. Didn't do anything. To agree with you on the point, I think whilst you maybe looked at the likes of Fuchs, Morgan, Ward, and when... No, okay, yeah. Individually, if they need to step in at any point in the mm. season, you kind of you're not going to be heart racing and panicked if, say, Morgan has to step in or Fuchs has to step in individually. But nothing to suggest they're ready for you know to start pushing for first team. All Brighton was reliable as ever. It was a sound all round performance with probably only a few players that you looked at and went. I hate to mention it. I know he's got a, a, a hate mob crew going, but I'm sorry. If if Damari Gray plays again for less of this season, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with what we've got in and what we're bringing in if he has to step in and play for Leicester again because at 18 years of age, we brought Damari Gray in. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want to get the biggest negative out of the way and move on to the positives as quick as you can in this. Yeah. But Gray, when we moved in, he was like a... We thought we had a rough diamond, you know, his ball control wasn't brilliant. His first touch needed work on. He needed to stop 
thinking about being the back page headlines and make a pass or a cross. Here we are, what's he now, 24, six years later, still doing the same mistakes. That should be his last performance for me. I think I said before, uh, and I'm not sure whether it was with yourself or maybe um, one of my other uh, uh, colleagues, but um, when we first bought Gray, and I've got a friend who's a Birmingham fan, he was, oh, God, we didn't want to lose him. You've got a great, you know, rising star there. But I think when you have as many managers looking after one player as, as he has had, and not one of them has seen anything in him, Mm. To me, that you know, you, you could say like, well, Rogers can come in, and maybe he has with Inacho a bit, you know, improved him, uh, you know, in, in any way, form at, at all. Hasn't happened with Gray, you know. Not, I can't remember how many managers he's had, but he's had at least two or three, and none of them have fancied him, and that surely says says it all. That does. I mean, we made the point in our last pre-match. Sometimes you know, you could fire the chefs all you like, but if one of the ingredients is constantly bad. Um, you know, you got to start looking to blame the ingredients where you're getting it, and 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 what and why they're there, why you're using them, because mm-hmm. it's not it's not chef's fault if if you're sacking chef after chef for one bad ingredient, you're making yeah. the wrong call. Yeah, uh, to the point where I'd even loan him out if no one wants to buy him. I'd stick him on the transfer list, and I'd stick him alone for his own sake, for his own <laughs> sake, because. He's one of them. He, he falls into the category, or I reckon, of players in 10 years' time. You're going to be talking about players that had potential and never lived up to it, like Ravel Morrison. He's going to become one of them if he's not careful, and he needs to maybe drop down a division to maybe find his feet. Maybe that will do oh. it. I don't know. Or, and well, I mean, I'm just looking on, uh, if you look on, uh, on, on our website, lestertillidie.com and news pages, there's been a couple more as there seems to be um, uh, things about uh, Wesley Font for, for, for Fauna. That's not easy for me to say. And one of the um, headlines was that St Etienne might be interested in taking uh, doing a deal with, a, you know, yeah. if we throw a player in. Gray and money for Fafana, would you do that? I think the only person, the only team that suits is Leicester because I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's that's probably that's harsh from me. Actually, mm-hmm. you never know. Maybe it's a different league. He needs to play in a different a, a league that's not as strong and as quick as the Premiership. I don't know. I don't really. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't really watch the European no. league. I don't watch the French league, the German leagues, and that. I only know it from here, saying what people say constantly about it. Maybe that's an idea we'd go for. Personally. Mm-hmm. I like the talks more that we're swaying our efforts and attention more towards Jonathan Tarr because that's a player I'd love to see in our back line. Yeah. Well, I think as well, is, yeah, I take it. But I think you, you, you should have looked, sometimes players can't make that step up. You know, I mean, you know, we, we all know, you know, we can all sit there and all, we can all quote Jamie Vardy and, you know, that that's not quite one in a million, but almost to, to make that step up. Took him a few seasons, though, and a bit of Nigel Pearson hugs to, to sort of um, sort him out. I very much remember... Um, oh, I can't remember. My mind's gone. Five five million pound striker from Wolves, rubbish. Who, who am I thinking Oh, I think, I can, I can bad bye. bye bye. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I mean, I can remember, as you know, I lived in Burnley for 25 years. After us, he went to Burnley. And in the Championship, he was knocking them in for fun, going off his backside and everything, whichever club he played for. Just couldn't well, do it in the Premier League. And that, that might be the case with Gray. Well, I mean, first of all, people do forget, and it's because it was so disastrous the mm. second season he had. Akinbai, actually, I think he managed nine goals or ten goals. I think he got yeah. 11 in all competitions. His first season, he was he was no worse than the likes of Heskey and Cotty, just the goals were shared around. And people forget his first season. I think if you check back through his Wikipedia page, I know that's Wikipedia, so anyone can have a dabble on it. But I think his overall stats, we was probably one of his most prolific clubs for goals for the club he scored for, apart from Wolves, obviously. He, but, you know, he was just one of them that when it when push yeah. came to shore and he was the only one there, he couldn't do it. And I think that's but the you, thing with But yeah, you say you take the point, though, that sometimes it is a step too far for some players. Yeah, definitely. I think I think maybe it is, but it's just hard to know. Sometimes it is. I mean, there's there's a lot of youngsters out there that you that unfortunately the media and their own 
advice us to fans and you know we we've done it ourselves with our players we we're probably more yeah. inclined to big them up and than than other clubs fans would but the thing is sometimes you get a player that has that potential and that potential is like maturing as a, as, as as a teenager as an adult it, you're either going to hit it or you're going to fall short of it and grace well he's 24 now isn't he and he's fallen short of it he's levels at the championship and maybe yeah. maybe he'll be one of them players Kind of like David Nugent, um, you know, can do a whirlwind job at the championship level. And unless he sticks with the promoted side, he's not really ever going to go to like a Southampton and do well. I can't see him getting into a premiership side like Southampton or Burnley or anything like that and do anything. Because no. I think they'd see it as a downgrade on that position. And that's purely because his lack of effectiveness over the last three seasons at Leicester. Yeah. Going back to a point that, that you made uh, earlier and a point that was actually made on one of the posts on uh, the Leicester Till I Die Facebook group last night, um, you're not going to see those 11 playing together anytime soon as no. in near a, near a Premier League game. But no. And I think, I think it was one of those games where everybody got tarred by the same brush, but you, know, you, you wouldn't get Morgan and Fuchs well, you might do at the moment, but necessarily playing together. But individually, you know, if you get those, you know, one or two coming in, that they, mm. they will do a job when they are playing with the main team. And and yeah. I think that Morgan and Fuchs, when they re-signed, was the thought behind them, is the fact that, yeah, they're there just for cover. And I think that was that was the case with, with most of those players last night. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if we was if I if I was to quickly run off the eleven and and say what that proved or didn't prove in a sense from like yesterday's game, because mm -hmm. I made a point that maybe just on pure talent and namesake alone, and because he was such a main feature, I think the only one from that starting eleven, and it would still be incredibly harsh on anyone who replaced mm -hmm. in that starting eleven to come in would be Madison. Mm -hmm. But I'll just quickly run through the eleven. I think Ward, yeah. Fuchs. Uh, Morgan, Albrighton, just showed they're reliable enough to step in if needs be. Just like mm -hmm. you just said there. It was great to see Amar to get 90 minutes. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, and it takes the pressure off Ndidi. Uh, I did a bit of research. It was a tight groin, I think it was, and he just wasn't risk. Should mm -hmm. be fine and fit for Man, uh, for Man City. Just a, a quick tap on that. I think Chowdhury probably put himself on the cusp of being second choice because Mendy's done well, nothing wrong, nothing brilliant sort of thing. It was great to see Dewsbury Hall get some experience in the first team. Thomas kept his development going. And then the bad start, really, because Gray looks a lost cause, as we've already mentioned. I'll leave that there. And in the is it's like he resets every season. How many games is it going to take before we go, ah, right, there's the improvement in him? Because he had a few moments, but after that, he couldn't string a pass together. He couldn't go more than 10 yards with a pass. So many heavy touches, some bad balls where we were trying to counter, and he just completely killed it with a bad pass. Was he, I mean, again, I can remember when we signed him, he was, he was going to be the next, you know, Jeff Hurst. He, 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 but, I mean, you know, like I've said this before, you and me could play up from for Man City and, and and get a few goals. And uh, yeah, yeah, that that's you know we 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 have to take that into account that the, you know the team he was playing in. But I don't, and and people will tell me if I'm wrong here. I don't think when he was at Man City, he ever played as a lone striker. He might have had the odd game where he came off the bench and had to play as a lone yeah. striker. But but I mean, a, a, as much as you could say over maybe the last couple of years before the the players we've got in now are here he mm. didn't have the quality but we consider ourselves and a lot of pundits consider us to be a top six side now mm. so he's got the quality around him so now he, he's now and ever i want him to succeed when he signed i went we've got a player here we've got a player yeah. here that if we can kick on and get him working right and, and, and taking over from body over the years and progress nicely he's going to mm. be a player that we're going to be glad we pay 25 million for and maybe he's fallen into the Perez and Gray category slowly with me, where it's like, you've got to do it now, kid, or yeah. you're just going to lose the fans. It, you know, I know he's not the most favourable player mm. in, in, in fans' eyes, and I still back him. And look, if 
uh, just to verify, if Gray goes on an amazing run of games and suddenly kicks form out of absolute nowhere, like a Randy Orton RKO, out of nowhere, he brings form books galore, right? I mm. will cheer his name and back him to the hills. I still want That's him, cool. whilst he's wearing a Leicester City shirt, to be successful. Yeah. Do not question me thinking I'm just slagging him off for the sake of slagging him off. Any player that wears a Leicester City shirt while they're at this club and giving what they've got, I want them to be successful. Yeah. But I also take my blue tinted glasses off to see them for what they are right now, currently. Yeah, and I think right now there are two very... players I don't see doing well. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. I'm going to say it's a very good point you make in that people see that you know football is about opinions, and That's you know seven. we exactly, exactly, and you know just because you don't agree with somebody else's opinion doesn't make you wrong. It's just your opinion, and because you criticise teams you know we, we are fans and we are allowed to criticize team our team we were allowed right. to criticize players it doesn't mean that we don't want them to do well it doesn't mean i mean a couple of uh at the end towards last season i called the whole team a bunch of muppets but yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean that my support for them is any less it's just how i felt they played in that particular game um yeah of course put the blue shirt on they will always get, you know, our support. But the interesting thing is, tomorrow night on the Opposition View show, uh, which will be 7.30, I'm talking to Ray from um, City Fan TV, and uh, we will be discussing Inacho, I would imagine, at some depth. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes. they've, got, they've got first buyback option on him. Although I don't think they'll give us 50 million for him, which I think was the agreement. <laughs> but, uh, but no... I've got to I've got to mention this, and I've got to come on to this because you, you you know you've gone through the the uh, the team. Perez, he came on and seventy six minutes replaced Jewsbury all. Mister Sitter with it with with, yeah. his, with his head. I I like this guy, and I try and defend him week in week out. And I, I found I'm finding now I I'm, I'm running out of excuses for him. Which is exactly the point I got to near the end of last season. I was like, okay, we're persistent with him on the right. He's going to improve. I've got to give him time. Fans need to do it. Um, and they need to do it. You know, they need to give him the patience. So I just kind of got caught out trying to read a comment and keep talking there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they need to do it. But I, I, the one thing that gets me now is I think he takes Gray's role. If Under comes in, He's going to get given the opportunity because it's pointless bringing this. It's pointless all the negotiations going on to bring under in if he's not going to get in at the first chance to make yeah. a statement. And then yeah. Leicester fans, I feel sorry for under in a way because now there's a lot more pressure on him because if Gray and Perez are the standards we've got to play on the right, and I know again, I know Perez isn't a natural right winger, but he's not mm. going to play in the position that he wants to, and we he knew he must have known that before he signed for us. Um, you know, he must have known that was going to be the case that he wasn't going to play his natural position. And a bit like Gray, he's flatlined with his non-improvement. He's not improved in any way on that right. He's still weak on the ball. Yes, he has his little tricks and turns, but more often than not, they come to nothing. Um, so, you know, Leicester are looking at that right side where if, let's just, you know, put the mockers on it, under yeah. doesn't, you know, under under achieves at Leicester, you know, to get a little joke oh, there and, you know, yeah. fingers crossed, touch wood, it, it's not the case. But if I was Brendan Rodgers, after what I've seen and, and the lack of development from Gray, I would be going, right, under's not working. He's, you know, let's, let's just talk 10 games in the future. He's, he's settled in. He's still not got going. He's, he's no better or worse than Perez and Gray. I'd be going, right, Ricardo. Get yourself up on right wing. Castagne, get you back to preferred right side. Justin, get out on the left, and we'll go with that. We'll just go with that yeah. because it's yeah. not working with you three on the right. We need something better because yeah. I'm hoping now, I, I feel sorry, under is going to be under the microscope for the for his first three games. So let's hope it's a deal worth making and he is as impressive as YouTube made him look out to be. Rob, um, Rob McFarlane, good afternoon, Rob. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I put that up earlier. It's what we said earlier. Not many players from last night will get into the first 11, certainly not as a starting lineup. But no. I'm worried as to whoever we've brought 
in and is it time now to let this go that this is the you know everybody we we, we bring in in that position is going to be the new mares <laughs> with we, mares with mares he is what he is you cannot judge you know, it's like it's like any strike. Once Vardy retires, any striker we bring in is going to be the new Vardy. It's going to be the next Vardy. That is, let you know, who we got to go and say, look, you know, whatever you think about him now, when he was with us, he was bloody brilliant, and we've just got to let it go. And and you know, we've got to go with what we've got now and take that pressure off him. And we're not going to have the new Mares. We're just going to have the the new Wonder or the new Gazelle or the new whoever it happens to be. Let's just say we're going to have a right winger. We'll just leave it yeah. at that. We're not, yeah. we're not just do that. Yeah. I, 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 unfortunately, the media are never going to let it drop. I remember, and I rolled my, I generally rolled my eyes when I watched the Burnley game. And mm. astoundingly, I think it took them over 20 minutes to mention it, but they went, well, MDD playing out of position normally. He's filling in for the, for, you know, trying to be a big replacement for N'Golo Kante. And I was like, uh, but no, he's indeed he. He's our centre midfielder, a central defensive midfielder who's who's brilliant. He's doing a great job. He's one of the best central defensive midfielders in the Premier League right now. Yeah, I agree with that. I I mean, I yeah. give him pay fifteen million for Perez would have been overpaying. But enough on that one. But yeah, I, I don't stop comparing his players that weren't here. What we say that Jamie Vardy's the new Gary Lineker. Yeah, you know, Casper Schmeichel's the new Peter Shilton. Fans. Yeah. Leave it alone. Just say, look, we've got a new right winger. The media are going to yeah. do it all the lives. That, let the media make him out to be the new this, the new that, when he's not. Can we just support yeah. our players as our new striker, our new midfielder? I don't yeah. want to hear, you know, I don't want, you know, let's just say, for instance, if, and I don't, I don't, can't see a world where it happened, but let's say Kevin De Bruyne left Manchester City and they instantly replaced him with Tillman's. A Man City going to start saying, oh, well, Timmons, he's going to be the next De Bruyne, he's going to be the next De Bruyne. You know, they'll, they'll probably would because he's Belgian and, you know, similar things. But no, you're going to say he's our new cent Realistically, he's going to come into that club. He's not signing on a contract going, if you can just sign here and just say you're going to be the new De Bruyne for the next five mm -hmm. years. He's signing on a contract to be Man City. He's, you know, new central attacking midfielder and vice yeah. versa, whoever we'd bring in to replace them. Yeah. You don't sign a contract as a new replacement. You sign him to be the new position in that yeah. player in that yeah. position. Okay. Again, going back to last night, and we lost. We're out of the Caribou Cup now. Like I say, had we got our, for past Arsenal, we, we'd be coming up against Liverpool anyway. But has Rodgers got a bit of a free pass there? Because I think, you know, if you look back, if that had been Puel that had done that, he would have got absolutely roasted. I would have probably roasted him myself making 11 changes. But even I looked at that team last night and thought, yeah, I get why he's doing it. So Roger's got a free pass with that one, do you think? I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, unfortunately, when in any club, and we've seen it in particular, I'll do this for the shout out for it, but in regards to Bale at Real Madrid, and I think when... In regards to when a fan, when the fans or the managers fall out with a player, so in, in regards to well, you're probably right. Even though Ranieri, when we had four competitions, was given the free hit, hmm. uh, I, I don't know if Puel would have been given such. He'd have given, definitely been given more of a hard time for this hmm. than Rogers, which doesn't make sense because you know it's just natural. A manager at some point has to see what the youth has got which we've already tried and seen. And we've obviously got some, he's obviously got some clear focus names in Dewsbury Hall. And as we know, playing the last several games of last season and yeah. last night, the top Luke, see, I know it's Luke, George is at yeah. UPR, Luke Thomas, you know, is clearly ones that they're thinking will be the future in three or four years time. Yeah. And he has to give our rotation players minutes that, you know, like yeah. we've said, Ward, Morgan, Fuchs, Amati and Albrighton are going to need minutes on the clock if they do need to step in this season at any point. And yeah. we used the game exactly what it was, and so did Arsenal. Hmm. When I look at the sort of a lot of the players that were there last night, I am beginning to think that I think Rogers, because we know Rogers likes youth, you know, he, yeah. he's always promoted youth. And 
are, are we looking here at a long-term project are we I looking so. at the fact that you know we brought rogers in uh, a bit like i remember brian little those years ago you know we're going to give him time brian, you know. brian little brian <laughs> Sorry. are we going to give him you know the time that you know when pearson came back he was given the time we didn't go straight back up and give him something to build rather than just sort of come in and, and do the instant couple of seasons that that's the feeling i'm getting i'm getting the same feeling i like to think that he's at a point now that he's going to be given you know he's had his trial run as maybe you would say he's probably passed that you know, like you know, like when you start working, you normally get a trial period, and that's normally when yeah. you either nail it down. You do. I think he he passed that, and he's been given the faith because it would have been easier. Uh, it would have been so much easier um, at the end of this season, at the end of last season, to have gone. Well, yeah, he's completely bottled it. He's not going to do it. We need to get someone else in who can handle that pressure. But instead, you know, the hierarchy looks at the bigger picture and can see what he's been doing. And yes, yeah. maybe from managers gone before him where it started. I mean, I mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. No matter what you say about him, Powell was the one that started this with Chowdhury yeah. and, and, and that coming into the team. And you can see last season, clear indication with Luke Thomas playing left back. Yes, obviously injuries, but still he was, he was training with the first team beforehand. It was obviously clearly in his mind as someone he wants to bring through. I think yeah. you need to get rid of the house of cards and give him building blocks to start building this team and give him four, five years to develop this team. And then instead of being a case of start again and get someone in because he's completely dropped off the boil, mm. Rogers has a steady set in a lovely position to go, right, and I need to pass the torch. Sort of like O'Neill got to the point with Leicester where he went, I've done all I can, I've mm. set you on your way, find someone else to continue my work yeah. and hopefully this time get it right and I, and I think you know looking at what is being done um at, at our club and uh, people keep mentioning this but the training facility is going to be you know amazing and we've seen this happen before you know you know it's costing is it 100 odd million or something for that training facility the money that we're going to have for the transfer market is going to be limited you know if we're spending 100 million on the training facility but you can't just survive on buying players all the time and i've seen other clubs that have gone out and built brand new stadium and then it's affected look at arsenal you know they they spend a fortune on the emirates couldn't then spend that much on on squad strengthening it, it's a very thin tightrope and of course now we're looking at footballers as i think you tend to and go oh that's what it looks like now but yeah if we can hold on to Rodgers, if we can keep hold of our best players and 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 or, or sell them at a vast quantity and bring others in, get this training facility. Surely the future, to to quote an old TV advert, future isn't orange. The future is blue. Well, yeah, I mean that's exactly it, and I, and I think we've, I think on the bigger picture, on the on the bigger scale of things, Leicester. Leicester have probably done a lot better than most people recognise because there's, and you know, I see a lot of fans going, Oh, we don't want to become a selling club. Mm. Well, you can't turn down 80 million for a centre back, no. you can't turn down 50 million for a, a left back that, that a lot of Leicester fans, for whatever reason, it's probably because he wasn't good at one part of his job compared to the other, mm. you know. If you're saying he's not that brilliant and it's an absolute bar, you know, an absolute hounding for a price we got Manchester United paid for Maguire, you know, you're not going to turn that down. You can't say, well, if you really want him, you're going to have to pay 80 million. Or if you really want Chilwell, you're going to have to pay 50 million. And then when a team actually meets that, go, oh, you know, we actually meant yeah. 90 million or 70 million. Um, we got more than they're probably worth at the current market for them. And we invested it. We invested it. I mean, we got an instant replacement that we already had in Sionchu for Maguire. We're developing one for us um, with Thomas, and we brought in Justin. So clearly we have aspirations for who can cover that position more than he is a natural one. But we're already doing the work behind the scenes with our youth and players we're bringing in and looking to bring in. 
Uh, and and now you've got to remember we've got a lot of what you class as dead wood. Mm. You know, whatever you thought of them on an individual level. I know a lot of people still say they'd like to see Slomani come in, but we're not going to play his style of football to suit him. So I don't. I just see Slomani is now a pointless option to keep at Leicester because we're never going to function our football around someone like Slomani who's who's still got a great deal to offer, but just not to a club like Leicester for the style of football we play. But they had gone big wages. They came in on big wages because, you know, like any agent would with the player, they went, they won the Premier League, they want to be in Champions League. Well, we can get a lot of money out of this, and so can you. They came in on big wages. We need them off the wage bill first. You've got a, you've got a financial fair play that, unless you're Man City, you can, um, I don't want to get this flagged up, but let's say spend the money to get them out of trouble. Um, Have good know, lawyers. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, if this guy's, um, you know, if the, if the uh, family are watching and they see this video and we get sued, they can help us with lawyers to get out of it. But, uh, <laughs> I think quickly yeah, moving on then at that point, maybe, yeah. maybe that is a good time to sort of move on. Um, Indeedy, we need to talk Indeedy. Um, yes, um, could be out for up to 12 weeks, Roger say, but you you were saying earlier you weren't sure about that. Well, I mean, this was the development that I, I didn't get a chance because of how late it was and I was doing other things. I didn't see his pre-match thing, but reports I heard at start, it was noted as a groin strain. Clearly, it's not. If Rogers is saying it, it could be up to 12 weeks. Um, well, just, just to say what it says here on the um, lcfc.com, uh, Leicester City midfielder Wilfred Ndidi could miss 6 to 12 weeks of action after picking up an abductor, abductor injury against Burnley on Sunday evening, according to manager uh, Brendan Rogers. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea what an well, abductor injury is, but, you yeah. know... You know. Um, it sounds like he's got a duck attached to him at some point. I don't know. I don't. I don't I'm not a medical professional. Well, then in that case, you should go and see a quack. Oh yeah, he needs to see. Hey. A quack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, if that's the case, I think it's absolutely fantastic that all the question marks and and cloudy opinions over Mendy have been completely wiped yeah. in in two games. It's fantastic. It's not well. It's not because obviously, indeed, no. he's injured, and you know, yeah. I'm not saying that's fantastic. That's that's bad news. But it's great yeah. to see that we've already got a rebuilt and a re-established confidence in Mendy. Yeah. Because now we're not so worried. You know, you talk about players like where was the goals going to come from? Cavani. Well, we got four without him in Burnley. What 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 we're going to do if indeed he's not fit to play? Well, it looks like we've got another month or but maybe three without Ndidi. Yeah. Mendy, two for two, doing really I mean, well. I think you've got to look now. For me, uh, I think um, I'm guessing Evans. I still I still don't know this 100%, but I'm presuming Evans isn't going to be back for Man City. No, Surely... I had this cleared up. He is right. back. He is back, is back. Rule was for two years that it was league suspension, league suspension, cup for cup, but then they changed it for whatever reason because the FA likes to just change rules. Yeah. It's league and cup competition, so he served his three match ban, so he will be back uh, for Man City. Well, that 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 shook my argument up then, which was going to say put a at least we could put a Marty in there. I would but... I would have done that though. I would have done that. Yeah. I would have put a Marty yeah. in after yeah. last night if needed. And I... I also think as well, like you say, Mendy in that in that role. Um, he, he it, I just think it's that role where, again, you've got this. Oh, it's the next Canty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it is that sort yeah. of role where you, you don't necessarily get many plaudits, and if you just get on with your job and you don't get mentioned, you're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, you hit the nail right on the head, Dave. You're he's pretty much the unsung hero position that you get because you're not doing too much going forward, but you're shoring up the defence. And unless you hear the good all-round performance, it is from a team and an individual because he's not having to do a lot defensively if you're not hearing him. If you're not hearing, Mendy makes tackle, Mendy makes tackle, indeed he makes tackle, indeed he makes tackle, great clearance. You know, if you're not hearing that, it means the defence you know, and the midfield are doing their job properly. And if you're hearing great ball by 
indeed a great pass by Mendy or, or Chowdhury or whoever. I don't want to not include him in that talk. No. But then you know they're doing something right. So yeah, you're dead. You're dead right on that. You hit the nail on the head for that statement. Brilliant. Well, um, like I say, we can we can concentrate on the league as they say, but we can also concentrate on the Europa League. Uh, I'd love to see uh, an FA Cup win while I'm alive, but we've got uh, we're still in three competitions. I think when the draw was made, we probably knew the writing was on the wall for that. Um, Man City is going to be uh, that's going to be the real test for me. I mean, we've we, we've you know people said West Brom are the whipping boys, Burnley it was a good performance, but that was a tougher test. Man City, it's going to be our, obviously going to be our toughest test yet. Yeah, that is true, and um, I think unfortunately, even though it's still only early doors, it's it's clear to see West Brom are going to struggle. But I like I made the point, and you made the point too on our Burnley game you know their goalkeeper was second in the Golden Glove you don't put four past him without having talent going forward uh, Man City I think obviously a lot of people will be expecting a win from Man City but we've beat them before we can beat them again and you never know I think as long as the intensity and performance is there even if we don't get the result, it's a pleasing step forward. Yeah. I think really. anything, any, if we can get that, a result's a bonus. Really? I think. Um, some, <laughs> a bit like you there, I was um, a little bit, I uh, think if I put that post up, I don't think you'd see either of us, which some people might say would be a good thing. But apparently... Maybe, maybe. Simon Lewis, thank you for that. Tendons are the issue, are the tissues, sorry, that attach the bones to the muscles in your body. Abductors are the muscles that rotate an arm or leg to the side of the body. The abductor, abductor, tendons in the hip help the hip open out to the side. Simon Lewis, thank you very right. much. I think we've thank you very much for that. <laughs> Welcome to NHS TV. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I want to say thank you to Brad. It's been a, a, a quick, brief one um, on a what day are we now? Thursday afternoon. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll see you back on uh, Sunday night after the Man City game. And let's hope we're we're kind of smiling. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's that's what we'll take from the game. As long as we're smiling on one front, hopefully it's going because it's three out of three. But I, I. I'd just be happy to see the effort and performance and then the result, like I said, again, is, is the bonus. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, Brad. Thanks so much for joining us. I will see you on Sunday. I'll speak to you Sunday, Chris. Take care. Okay. Uh, thanks to everybody, including including uh, Simon Lewis. I'd love to know if you were a doctor um, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, a little brief extra show there. Um this will be available on YouTube afterwards or on Facebook. We do have the Leicester Delight Eye TV, uh, which is our YouTube channel. All the um, links for our Facebook, Leicester Till I Die, our uh, Twitter, at Leicester Till I Die, uh, sorry, at Leicester TID, and Instagram, Leicester Till I Die 1. All the links will be under the video in uh, YouTube, which, as I say, is you, uh, Leicester Till I Die TV. Uh, Simon, apparently, <laughs> Simon is a butcher. Well, brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm not going to upset you. you you'd, you'd know how to dissect me then, wouldn't you? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Simon. Thanks to everybody for watching in. Uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, um, again on Facebook, I'll be talking to Ray from Manchester City TV. I'm sure Inacho will come up in the conversation. Uh, also, if you check out www.lestertillidie.com, uh, the opposition view, uh, Ray and Jarvis, another Manchester City fan, we've got two fans this week have answered the questions there. Uh, if not, like I say, it'll be Friday 7.30 for the opposition view. Um, Sunday night, about half an hour after the game finishes with Brad for the post-match, and then next Tuesday for the Tuesday night show. And don't forget, obviously, we've got Scott's weekly roundup every Wednesday when he covers everything Leicester City. Guys, stay safe, be good, look after yourself, stay well, and uh, I'll hopefully see you tomorrow night. Bye now. Take care.